Hello everyone. We're back once again with some golf cart related questions. I am Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. I am a member of the Gearheads on Demand service that we offer. I'll talk more about that later in the video. That service is where you can speak with me one-on-one. -on -one. If you're interested in looking into that, click the link in the description. Uh, we come here twice a week. We go live and uh, we talk to people in the live chat and I actually go over some regular, regular questions also. So if anybody's watching in the live chat, feel free to participate. I'll, I'll get to you and we'll, we'll see what you got. Well, the garage is now open, so let's get started with question number one. And by the way, this is Tuesday, October the 18th, and this is episode 65. Question number one. I have an 84 club car, and it seems like when it starts, it wants to lunge forward, but then after it gets going, it runs okay. What would you look at or replace? Let's see, an 84 club car, number one. Well, you never told me if it's gas or electric. You did say that if, that it, if it starts, so it makes me think that it's gas, but uh, uh, we'll go over both of them. In, 80, in, in that year, if it's electric, then that would have been the five solenoid system, all right? What could make, there's, there's one very obvious thing that could make that lunge. The, the normal operation for that five solenoid system goes like this. I probably said this before, but uh, you turn the key on, put it in forward, you, touch, you start to push the accelerator pedal, and you hear, you, you hear the main solenoid click, all right? You got, that's one solenoid, the main one. Nothing happens with the car. It does not move on the, on the main solenoid click. You push it a little bit further, your first speed solenoid clicks. That makes the car roll just a little bit. You push it a little further, the third solenoid will click. That makes the car go a little bit faster and so on for the fourth and the fifth solenoid. Now, if you've got one of those solenoids out, like your, your first movement solenoid might be out, uh, and you start to push the accelerator pedal, then it skips the first one and goes right to the second speed. And that could cause your car to lunge. And then after that point, everything could be normal. So if your car is electric, then that's what I would be looking at. Uh, you've got every one of those solenoids has a micro switch. And so it could either be the micro switch is not working or the solenoid itself is bad, one or the other. Now, if your car is gas, what I would be doing for a lunge would be uh, examining the clutches while the car is running in neutral, like revving it up and do the RPMs and watch your clutches for smooth, normal operations. If your car is lunging and it's gas, you should be able to see it happen in the clutch. All right, number two. I installed four new 12 volt batteries on Sunday. I use my cart for less than 15 minutes a day. The battery meter still shows 100%. How often should I charge batteries? Well, if you've got brand new batteries and you use your cart less than 15 minutes a day, you don't necessarily need to charge it. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything to let it go to a couple of days and then charge it. But it's also not going to hurt anything if your charger is a golf cart, a uh, fully automatic charger. It's not going to hurt anything to charge it either, as, uh, as long as you let it go through the entire charge cycle. I, I never recommend doing intermittent charge cycles during the day. Like, don't do short charge cycles and then unplug it and go, and then you come back and you plug it in, and then later on that day, just because you think you're making your cart stay fully charged. I never recommend that because if you had a good battery pack, which you do, you've got a good battery pack, you shouldn't be able to, to run it down to a dangerously low voltage level in an entire day. So just wait till you get through with the cart for the day. But in your case, if you're only using it 15 minutes, that is really, really light. It might not be necessary unless you're completely through with it. Because if you're completely through with it, your charger is going to shut off in a much shorter time than normal anyway, if because your car is you're almost fully charged. Your charger will sense that it's almost fully charged and it's not going to overcharge your car. Uh, so it's 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 up to you. you. You can do that either way and you shouldn't suffer any damage. Number three. We live in Canada, north of Winnipeg, Manitoba, and we get cold in the dead of winter. 
What is the best way to store the batteries or do I keep the charger on them all winter? Last year they were in an unheated garage and I charged them once a month or so for a couple of days. I heard they should not freeze. Well, fully charged batteries will not freeze, not even in Canada. So you just need to have a plan and your plan can consist of what you would do and charging it once a month or so, something like that, just to make sure that the batteries stay at fully charged because when you stop charging it, you know, and you let it sit there, especially in the really cold weather, the voltage in your batteries is going to diminish slowly. If you have a good battery pack, the better the battery pack, the slower that it diminishes. So once a month or so should be fine. Uh, just make sure you stick to that plan and everything should be fine. That, that's that's the, uh, the deal. You have to have in the winter time when it gets real cold, if you're located in a really cold environment, you just have to have a battery plan, a, battery, a fully charged battery plan, whatever it is, whether it's charging once a month or whether it's a charger that does it for you automatically, like a Summit 2 charger, like a Lester Summit 2. Uh, it has a storage mode function on it and uh, th that will help get you through the winter and you don't have to do anything. It's just fully automatic. So we just have to have a plan together. Let's check over here on Craig 35. What's up, Craig? What's shaking gearhead? Not much, man. What's up with you? Appreciate you, man. Let's see. Number four. Hi, I am noticing an odd smell once I come to a stop. Any idea what it could stem from? I have a 2013 RXV. Uh, uh, gas or electric? I mean, what, what kind of, you know, that would be my first question. But let's just say, uh, gas you would recognize if you had an odd smell in a gas car you would it would be you know it would be you know you're running too rich or or you know be some type of gas fume smell or something like that so i'm going to assume you're probably talking about an electric uh, uh rxv and does it smell i don't know if you know what clutches smell like when clutches get burned or brake shoes like on an 18 wheeler on the interstate when they can't stop and they have to really burn on their brakes that is it that kind of smell if that's the case it could be your brake your motor brake you know, it's, it's, uh, your motor brake is sticking and it's, it's creating a burned asbestos or whatever they use on those brake pads. I'm not exactly sure what they are nowadays, but the, it's a burned brake pad smell. It's, it might be what you're, what you're smelling. Where's the fuse panel, number five, by the way. Where is the fuse panel located on the 2013 Club Car President I-2? Not sure what fuse panel you'd be referring to on a precedent unless you have lots of accessories like you're, you have a lot of lights and uh, blinkers and maybe a full uh, straight legal kit. Maybe that would be hooked to some type of fuse panel, but there's no other fuse panel like that I know of in a precedent that that you would be searching for unless it's a like I said, unless it's a fuse panel for something that's been added to your car. Let's see. Check Facebook and YouTube a little bit. Well, it looks like we're good there. Number six. I have a 2008 Club Car DS and need to replace the battery wires. How do I replace the one that is routed through the OBC? Well, you, you have to cut it. Uh, when you buy a new OBC, there's a, there's a cable already routed through that hole because it's got two ends on it. So to, if you wanted to replace the one through the OBC, and by the way, you do need to go through that hole with a cable. Don't, don't think you can just go around that hole. You gotta go through that hole because that OBC is monitoring uh, energy waves coming off of that cable. 
and it will screw things up with your charging and, and a lot of things if you, if you don't run a, a cable through that hole. So you have to cut it and have a plan to put a new end on it. You've got to cut it out and when you, when you route one through there, you only put one end, only one you're routing through there obviously, and then we, when you get it through there, you've got to crimp an end or, or solder or whatever you're going to do and put the end on the other end of the cable. Let's see here, number seven. I have bought a Summit 2 charger. I wanted to know if this charger, when charging the batteries up to 100% green light, turns off automatically and stops consuming electricity, or do I have to unplug the plug manually to avoid spending electricity at home? Uh, a Summit 2, it goes into storage mode, okay? What storage mode is, is it actually shuts off, and it, it, I don't know if it completely stops consuming electricity, but it, it's, it's a solid-state charger also, by the way. So it uses very, very little electricity to begin with compared to the old-type chargers. I don't think that you would need to be worrying about electricity usage, but I'm not sure 100% that it completely shuts off the in consuming electricity when it is in storage mode. That would be the last, the last series of charging uh, stages that it goes through. Uh, I'm not sure if it completely cuts it out, but it, it, I can guarantee you that it cuts it out to as minimum as you can possibly get. So you probably won't even need to worry about that. Number eight, I'm interested in buying a Lester charger. However, I think that my old charger has my controller locked in dead battery mode and the charger will not turn on. How do I reset my controller? I'm afraid that if I install a new charger that the controller will still not let the charger work. Okay. I think we have a, I think you, I think you're mixing up some words that you don't realize here. Your, your car, if, if 48 volt club car has a controller, but it also has an onboard computer. Okay. That's two completely separate items in your electrical system. Your onboard computer is what controls your charger. Your controller has nothing to do with your charger. Your onboard computer is what controls your charger. The onboard computer, or OBC, it tells the charger to come on, it tells the charger how long to run, it tells the charger to shut off. It does a whole lot of other stuff, but that's the main things that it does. So if you're having a charging issue, it's not your controller, it's your onboard computer that could be possibly messed up. So the, the way to determine that the easiest way to determine that would be to try your charger first on another on another club car and see if it works normally. That way we know it's something to do with your car. At that point, it could either be your onboard computer or your batteries, one or the other, because your batteries could cause that to, to happen too. They could be too low on voltage. So we'd have to get all that straight and make sure that we're on the same page with the controller, onboard computer, and charger. This is from Rick. I have a 2018 EasyGo TXT Valor with lithium and want to upgrade the motor for better performance going uphill. Will Levitas AC drive control conversion kit, 600 amp controller with cop cave motor, EasyGo TXT 48 work? Well, yeah, that's, yeah that's, what he, that's what you have. You have a 48 volt TXT. You have a TXT Valor, but it's still a 48 volt TXT. So yeah, that's what you would need. In, in order to do that. I've, I've heard good things about the people that have done that conversion. Let's see, number 10. This is the last question and then I'll go check on the live, see if anybody's in the live. Anybody in the live watching or listening, feel free to ask a question or just say hello or say what's up. Let's see, number 10, have a 2010 Yamaha Golf Cart G29. 
came with a Yamaha 48 volt charger. When I plug the charger on, it never shows it's fully charged. Never shows it's fully charged. Well, I always say this, and I know it, it might get old to some people, but the easiest way for a person that doesn't own a golf cart shop to eliminate things and try to narrow down their problem when it comes to a charging issue is to try that charger on another golf cart and see if you get the same results if you are see if you get something different because that's what you need to do we need to start eliminating things that it is not we need to make sure that it's not your charger so try that on another golf cart uh, now other than that I would need voltmeter readings to to see you know if you might have a battery that's way behind the rest that's not allowing it to get up to a full charge so basically I would need I would need voltmeter readings on that all right, let me check, see if anything's going on on Facebook and YouTube. I don't see anything. I'll check one more time before we get out of here. Uh, we're doing a tip uh, every time we have a every time we have a session. Every time we have one of these live sessions, I'm I'm leaving with a tip. So here is today's tip. The tip is I, I talked about it earlier in this video. The tip is fully charged batteries will not freeze. You know, I, I get questions like this every time it starts getting cold. So the tip is in the winter time, if you're in a place where it gets real cold like Canada, like the other the question that was uh, or that we had earlier, then have a plan. You got to have a plan. You got to have a fully charged battery plan, whether it's charge your batteries occasionally yourself manually, get a charger that has a fully automatic system to it to where it will charge your batteries up and not trickle charge, shut off and come back on is actually a better thing than trickle charge, especially if you're going to be leaving for long periods of time. A better system is, is like the Summit 2 that has a storage mode function, which is not actually a trickle charge. It actually cuts off and comes back on after a certain amount of time. So anyway, that's a, that's a better system than trickle charging. Either that or have a neighbor that comes over and, and charges your car occasionally. Just have a plan. That's the tip. Have a have a battery plan for the winter. All right. If there's nobody on Facebook and YouTube, then I am going to get out of here. I want to thank everybody for coming. Thank everybody for watching in the live. I appreciate the questions. I appreciate everything. I will see everybody. Let's see, today is Tuesday the 18th. Uh, the next session will be Thursday the 20th. I will see you Thursday, this coming Thursday, not tomorrow, but the next day, the 20th at noon Central Time. So if you like this content, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and we can keep it going. All right, thank you. I'm out. The garage is now closed.